question is, what, and actually this is a typo right here, sorry. What time was it 25 meters above the launch point? What time was it? So how many seconds elapsed? Um, so our change in time is what we're trying to find. Um, I'm going to have to scroll back up here to look at some of our, our information. What's, uh, what's true about this? Um, time. Uh, okay. Well, we know that acceleration equals negative 9.81 meters per second squared and actually I shouldn't really have needed anything else up above uh, right here well, actually I, I am I am going to need something else but um, we're going to say that our displacement delta y that's going to be 25 meters now what's interesting is we're going to have two answers right here we're going to have two absolutely valid answers because if we have Say so here's the ground right here, and the ball going up, and then coming back down. Well, if this is 25 meters from the ground to, I don't know, say right there, then there's also going to be 25 meters, that is that displacement, that, that height above the launch point on the way back down as well. So we're going to have two answers. We're going to have two answers where there's a time for where the ball is at 25 meters. So we're solving for time, we have acceleration, we have our displacement. Uh, can we solve for time just using these two? And the answer is, I don't think so. Um, I think we need to use one of our previous answers right here. And this is the one I'm thinking of. The initial velocity is 27.44 meters per second. Here's one of those where you have to use a previous answer, and you just have to sometimes, but if you don't have to, I would suggest not doing it because it might not be right. But since we have, we know the answer is 27.4 right there, we can be pretty sure that that's, that's good to use. So let's use our VI as well. VI equals 27.44 meters per second. So now we should have enough to set up an equation where we can solve for time. And um, I don't know about you, but I'm thinking of our equation where we have a y displacement is going to be equal to um, initial velocity times time plus one half times acceleration times time squared. We're solving for um, solving for time. We have our displacement, and we we're told our displacement. That's what it was. We know our initial velocity, or at least we're pretty sure we do because we got it from a previous problem. And of course, we know our acceleration. So this is going to be quadratic. It's going to be quadratic because our initial velocity is not zero, so it's not going to drop out and go away. So if you recall, our, all of our quadratic equations or quadratic problems are in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Well, we're not solving for x, we're solving for t, but t is in that format. We've got something something t squared and plus something something t and then if we move this delta y over there, we'll have a third constant, and we'll set that all equal to zero. So I'm going to start by our subtracting delta y, that is our change in displacement, over to the other side. So vi times time plus one half acceleration times time squared minus. In fact, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to keep it plus. I'm going to say plus negative delta y equals zero. I wrote it that way only because I think it'll make our life easier because the, um, the format is ax squared plus bx plus c. So we'll keep the pluses in here, but we'll just know that that means to change the, the value of whatever c is. Um, now it's not perfectly in the right form because usually a is over here and, and b is over there. So let's rewrite it again. So that means one half acceleration times time squared plus initial velocity times time plus negative displacement equals zero. So this right here, that value is going to be our a value. That value is going to be our b. 
and everything in this parentheses right here is going to be our c value. So this is what's one half of a? Well, we know a is negative 9.81 meters per second squared, and so half of that would be negative 4.905. Um, and then multiply that by t. So I'm going to put that in the parentheses there. Plus, I'm sorry, by t squared, right? Plus our vi, but well, we believe that to be 27.44, plus our negative displacement. So our displacement, is we're, we're told, is 25. So that's going to be negative 25 meters. That's all set equal to zero. <clears throat> so when we use our quadratic formula, whether it's in the calculator or whether it's um, just the longhand. Oh, you know what? I forgot. I'm sorry. This should have a T next to it, right? Because that's VI times T. Um, whether we use the quadratic in our calculator or just the longhand version, these are the values that we're going to use for A, for B, and for C. When we punch them in, we will get two answers, and the two answers that we get are going to be the correct ones. So t time equals 1.145 seconds, or I should say that's t1. And our time 2, which is just as valid, is 4.455 seconds. Both of these are correct answers because there are two times, oops, sorry about that, and I forget how to get rid of that menu right there. Oh, gosh. Um, I'm just going to click off of here and... There we go. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, there are two times where the object, the, in this case the ball, is, um, is 25 meters above the launch point. And it's at these two times right here. So, I hope that helps. This is our third review problem. And um, the other two should be online as well. So, good luck on your test tomorrow and I'll see you then. Take care.